Hey, hey, welcome back to the Your Pretty Pennies YouTube channel. I'm Tara Jones Williamson, financial and lifestyle success coach. Welcome back to my channel and also welcome back to the Wedding on a Budget series. I am so excited that we are nearing the end of this series. This is the second to the last video. And so if you have not caught one through eight, it is some good stuff in there. We've talked about other different aspects on how to successfully execute a wedding on a smaller budget. I say about $5,500. That is what my husband and I spent on our wedding um, of our dreams. And our original budget was $7,000, so which is a smaller budget than thirty-five, forty thousand, $40,000, which most Americans spend on a wedding. So... Even $7,000 budget would have been great and we came in under that using these tips and tricks and tools. So make sure you grab your checklist and also your wedding budget tracker in the description box below. You can use that link and also check out our wedding highlight video if you have not done so to where you can see our $5,500 wedding on a budget that we just had back in February of 2020 and it was amazing. It was awesome. I still look at those photos and videos because I just want to be taken back. It was just such a great time. Such a great time. Today's topic is going to be about your wedding ceremony and reception venues and how to make sure that that is a low budget item in your budget, all right? Remember, going back to the budget aspect of it, we are not spending a ton of money on certain things in this wedding. We are spreading the amount of money that we spend on each item or each line item, each key item in our budget evenly right so for us one thing that was extremely important was i'm sorry i gotta change this lighting it's too much there we go the sun came out and it completely like washed me out that was weird so one thing that was really important for us is like i said in the previous videos is that we wanted a big wedding ceremony to where we can invite anybody and everybody and we didn't have to exclude anyone but then we wanted a private smaller wedding reception because that's when the big bucks start getting spent if you're starting to pay for a lot of people to eat to sit if you need a bigger venue and you need a wedding venue instead of like a small venue that you could just get for a couple of hundred dollars a night that's when things start getting tricky so for us we had our wedding ceremony at our church home the reason why we chose a church because this church was already big enough my church home was already big enough to seat 800 to a thousand people right because that's what we get on anywhere on any given sunday right it's not a mega church but it's a large size church to where it will accommodate the amount of people we had on our wedding ceremony guest list and if you are didn't see the wedding guest list and um the wedding invitation video i believe that is video number six i want to say i'm looking at my notes nope that's video number four let me see four nope i'm wrong four five mm, number seven video number seven check out video number seven was all about sending digital invites successfully and also paring down that guest list and your getting your wedding uh, ceremony guest list versus your wedding reception guest list in order to accomplish a $5,500 wedding having a huge reception is not going to be the best bet having a big ceremony where everybody can come is great and then a small reception where you have 50 to 75 people that will be your best bet because remember catering costs the amount of linens that you need the amount of decor and on the tables that you need um the amount of chairs that you need to rent and even how big or small the space that you need it will get bigger and bigger the amount of money that you spend will get bigger and bigger as the more people you tack on to that reception guest list all right so our wedding reception was actually at a fellowship hall of my dad's church so my dad's church home is different than my church home um and he goes to a church where it's a small church and then they have on the other side of town they have what they call a fellowship center which is what they usually do for all of like their small gatherings their uh their yearly like summer picnic and things like that when you walk in it's definitely not picturesque it is not 
what they would advertise as a wedding venue, right? And so the amount of money that it costs to rent it for a few hours is going to be substantially less because like I keep saying, once you tack on the word wedding onto something, prices start rising up. But if you go somewhere where it is a space and you can transform it on your own and that is your best bet you are going to come out of less money and so my dad spent 450 dollars plus 150 dollar refundable fee that he got out of that 450 all together that was it we spent 500 dollars on renting the ceremony space my home church 500 dollars with 150 dollar uh, deductible that we refundable reductible that we got back that was it right beautiful beautiful time and what i did was and we went on in a key wedding deck key wedding vendors a video i talk about the key wedding video vendors that i use one of them was an event decorator so basically i took these plain spaces that's not equipped to host a wedding and i hired a decorator she charged me 15 dollars altogether that's including her fee and the amount that she needs to rent all of the items that we needed in order to make the space look aesthetically pleasing and decorated and linens and chairs and you know votive candles and pillars and you know everything you know uh tablescapes the, the sweetheart table everything she did was under fifteen hundred dollars and we just had her decorate the wedding ceremony and the wedding reception and it was beautiful like I posted on social media and I've been posting on social media on both my Instagram and my Facebook both are at your pretty pennies um, pictures from our wedding and everybody's like oh my god where did you get married at where is your reception can I have the name if you would have seen and walked into these spaces beforehand you'll be like I'm not getting married here or this is, isn't suitable for a beautiful wedding but you have to have the vision first and then have somebody like an event decorator or you can DIY if you're creative and you're great at that have the vision to where you can create the atmosphere that you want with some up lighting with some tablescapes with you know your centerpieces with different types of chairs and what they offer you can really transform a blank canvas into something beautiful and you save thousands right the first wedding and reception video that i rep reception venue that i wanted cost five thousand dollars in february that was their off season price and if you wanted anything extra you had to pay up above that five thousand dollars that's the whole budget i spent for my wedding that was just about to be for the venue isn't that crazy right but when i went somewhere else i got a beautiful beautiful turnout and i spent 500 bucks on the ceremony 500 bucks on the reception venue and then we pay somebody fifteen hundred dollars to decorate both of them plus pay her for her labor and she 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 tore down she she set up and she tore down on her own we didn't have to do anything before or after it was amazing 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 all right so i wanted you to remember that when it comes to shopping for your wedding ceremony and wedding reception venues Keep in mind that number one, like I've been saying before, this is one day and it's a party. People are not really checking for your reception and your wedding venues. Like again, when I'm still hearing feedback about my wedding, I, I hear about the decor, I hear about the food, and I hear about like our wedding vow exchange and how sentimental it was because we are blending a family and it was a really beautiful like emotional moment that me and my my bonus daughter my stepdaughter my beautiful daughter uh had during the ceremony where she and i both started crying because she does look up to me a lot and she was so excited that her dad was marrying me and it was just don't even get me in tears i don't even want to go go into it but anyway so those are the things people remember they're not saying oh my gosh where is y'all uh you know that was weird that she used this church that's not suitable for a wedding or why did she choose this place for her reception nobody cares the food was good the music was good the atmosphere was good it was beautifully decorated they were warm because it was a winter wedding everybody was able to to, to dress to their best and have a good time the cake was good nobody really was worried about the building that it was in and whether or not it was suitable for a wedding or if it was a a wedding center or anything like that so don't get that in your head that you absolutely need to go somewhere that's 
already says a wedding venue. So remember that the wedding ceremony lasts 35 to 40 minutes, 35 minutes to an hour. Wedding reception lasts four to six hours. And so you need to place your time, attention, and energy as such, right? So for our wedding ceremony, we did minimal um, decorations. It was a lot, but it was enough, but it was minimal. And then our reception was four to six hours. We really played up the reception hall and made sure that everything was beautiful there because people were going to be spending more time there, right? So always remember that. Um, um, here's some other great budget-friendly ceremony venues. So if you are in a place that's warmer or if you're trying to get married in a season that is uh, a little bit, the, the weather is nicer outside, you can use the beach, you can use the woods, you can use the city hall steps. I've seen some really cute weddings where people are dressed to the nines, groomsmen, bridesmaids, everything, and they're in the uh, in front of the city hall building downtown. And then they take really cute downtown pictures and then after that you can go to a restaurant that you've like you know privately arranged for you to have your private reception where y'all could just sit down and eat and then you could cover the food bill that is a great low budget way to have a wedding and I think it's super chic and it's super fun super out the box I really like that idea if, it, if we got married in the spring or summer I probably would have did that idea where everybody is dressed to the nines but we're on the city hall steps and then we all go down to like a really nice private restaurant that we've like rented out for a couple of hundred or maybe even a thousand dollars for like 45 people that would be so fun i like that idea you can use a large mansion a backyard uh, of a large mansion this was another idea i played with had we got married in the spring and summer i would have airbnb a large house or a large mansion um or a mini mansion here in my area for a few hundred dollars for just one day and then i would have had a backyard wedding that was super pretty had like the white foldable chairs all over the place with like the ribbon swag on it had you know flowers already probably would already be out but have like pillars on the grass and then people sit down on the grass on the picket chairs and then um we would have had like an arch or something and we would have got married and had like a makeshift aisle down there with my red roses down the aisle like i would have had a backyard uh ceremony in the spring or summer i think that is just very pretty very good thing to do so if you are in a climate to where you can do that pretty much any time of year that's definitely a good option and then your reception could be right there you can bring caterers in and have them set up in the uh the kitchen and then y'all can either eat inside and then bring your food outside they can serve the food while it's outside and you can have you know the caterers serve while they're cooking girl buffet style listen I'm here for it. You can do picturesque parks. I've seen people do it in parks. I've seen people do it um, at pavilions, indoors. Remember, you have churches. You have small banquet halls that typically don't cater to weddings. Again, don't go nowhere to where they got their own separate wedding uh prices no we're not doing that right government buildings anything that's not geared towards weddings again the moment they say oh this is a premier wedding venue you paying three to five thousand just for a day that is your budget we are not doing that right you need to be able to spend your money intentionally so you don't have to break the bank um, here's some great reception venues, outdoor tents on the grass, a small country club, shaded forests, parks. I am, like I said, if you are in the springtime and the mosquitoes or the, uh, gnats, all of that aren't really out yet. Cause they typically don't come out to the evening. You can have your stuff during the day. And remember restaurants is a good way. I've seen people who have a brunch as a reception and then they go to their wedding ceremony outside or they have their wedding ceremony on a beautiful summer morning that's still cool outside, but it's like 70 something degrees. Everybody's in flowy dresses and you know, we're outside taking pictures that's eight or nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then you go to brunch at 11 at a restaurant. Either y'all can cover the bill as part of your wedding budget or everybody can cover their own bill especially if it's a private small party how beautiful would that be what a beautiful day would that be to have your wedding like we don't have to spend thousands and thousands and break the bank for a wedding like you can think outside the box all right um um 
some things I told you to think about, I want you to think about is where do you have connections and memberships at reduced rates? So when we started brainstorming for wedding venues, I knew that we had our my home church that I was coming from and going to my husband's church eventually, but I knew at our current church, we could host a large a larger ceremony of 200 to 300 people and we got a reduced rate of $500 since I was a partner or a member there and then for the reception my dad he was a member at a church and we got the reception hall or their fellowship hall is what they call it for $450. That was a membership rate, right? So where can you go to where you have access to low rates? Is it a country club you are already affiliated with? Um, are you already working in a park or forest that you already have connections to? Do you know somebody who works for the city that you're working for or parks and recs to where you can get discounts and different things like that? Kind of get your name slid in there, kind of get on the good list. Think about that. Um, be sure that the reception venue can seamlessly serve dinner, food, and drinks right so especially when you're thinking about doing outside weddings you want it to be seamless like although this is going to be budget friendly this is still an experience that you want and a party that you want people to come away with very excited and happy so you want to make sure that whoever you choose as your caterers make sure that they're equipped to serve outside they're equipped to keep food hot outside that they're equipped to keep keep bugs away or anything else anything that goes along with having a wedding at the beach or having a wedding outside or in a forest or in a tent or whatever the case is as you start thinking out the box think about all the nuances that goes into pulling it off seamlessly and make sure all your vendors are able to accommodate that right um Let's see if I have anything else on my notes. One thing I did was order and purchase up lighting. So in the wedding reception venue that we used, it was like bleak bland lighting. And so my DJ, which most DJs apparently have up lighting that they could bring with them for a little bit of extra charge, some people included in their rates, always make sure to get up lighting. So for us, it was very bland, so we got some white up lighting, then we also got a little bit of red up lighting, and then when the lights went down after 9 p.m. and the dance floor opened, we had some other different like blue and red colorful up lighting that just really set the ambiance and the mood. It was so exciting, it was so good. So always make sure to think about up lighting. If you have a boring venue space, up lighting is your friend, all right? Um let's see oh if you have a large wedding ceremony guest list and a small reception guest list meaning that everybody who's invited to the wedding reception wedding ceremony is not invited to the wedding reception your best bet is to not have it in the same place right so the reason why we had our wedding reception our wedding ceremony at the church and then we had our wedding reception, our wedding reception at a private fellowship hall is because it's very hard to kick people out. It's very rude. It's not polite. And so your best bet is to separate the two, right? And so everybody who is going, who's invited to the ceremony, they have directions and time to be at the ceremony. And then there's people who are invited to the ceremony and reception. They got the information for both the reception and the ceremony and those who don't have the information to the reception guess what they don't show up because they don't know where it is if i would have had it in the same space it would have been very hard they would have been like uh no i just attended the cer the wedding ceremony why am i not going to the reception they will automatically assume that they just transition into the reception portion and that's not the case so for me i would highly suggest if you are going to have it to where there's only a select few going to your private reception dinner to make sure that they do not uh that they do not come by separating the two ceremonies separating the two uh parts of your day 
All right, that is all I have. If you have any questions or comments about what we talked about today, please drop them in the comments. Don't forget to grab your uh, wedding on a budget checklist and also your budget tracker. Please also subscribe and hit that like button on your way out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the last video, video number 10 in the next video. Bye-bye.